you are the dean of the faculty of one of the greatest universities in the world. It's a really big and impressive history. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your faculty and what, uh, what is its profile now, what is its vision a little bit, and uh, just in those terms. Yes, indeed, this is one of the, the biggest theological uh, faculties in, uh, in Western Europe, at least. Um, very specific of our faculty is, of course, that it is quite old. It has been founded in uh, 1432, seven years after the university was founded in 1425. So um, from then on, it has known a history as a, as a quite international faculty. And up till this day, we have uh, kept this uh, international focus. So at present, we have around 700 students, of which half are international students coming from around the world, the four corners of the world, some 65 to 70 countries. Uh, the other half are Flemish or Dutch speaking students, so also students from the Netherlands. Uh, these students uh, are here for bachelor's degree, master's degree, some of them for the doctorate. In the international program, most of our students come here with the explicit aim to, uh, to enter the doctoral program, but uh, uh, often they first have to do a, a master's degree or a pre-doctoral year before they can enter the doctoral program. So, um, yeah, one out of four of our students is a, a doctoral candidate, is a doctoral student. Meaning that this faculty is quite research oriented. Uh, so uh, we have a faculty which, uh, for which academic research is very, very prominent, very, very important. A faculty of which all academic education is research based. This is, uh, yeah, you could say the faculty as it stands uh, for now. Um, it's a theological faculty. And uh, this faculty, also in a, in a highly secularized country, wants to retain its theological profile. That's the reason why for us, for instance, there is no um, separation, no conflict between theology and religious studies. Mm -hmm. A third important element, and uh, we are here in the library of the theology faculty, is of course uh, also the attempt to foster, you could say, a research, an international research climate for doing theology. Uh, our library has 1.3 million books, uh, offices, places for uh, doctoral candidates, assistants, postdocs and so on, sabbaticals, uh, to work, to do research together, to discuss uh, issues with each other. So fostering that academic environment is a third distinctive feature of this faculty. Fourthly, also very important, this faculty does not stand on its own, but is part of a, of, of a whole university, of a, a comprehensive university. This means that theology, in one way or another, is already from the very start challenged by the other sciences. Uh, not only philosophy, as it used to be in the past, but also the, the humanities, the social sciences, up to the, yeah, the natural sciences. So uh, the discussion, between faith and reason in this university uh, is colored by this, you could say, multidisciplinary access uh, yeah, you have in, in a comprehensive university to reality, to the phenomenon of religion, to what it is uh, to be a human being, and so on. Uh, this university, uh, especially this faculty, was very well known as a sort of an official voice of the Catholic Church for centuries and up to perhaps even the mid of the 20th. Uh, now it got its more independent voice, it's more critical towards Vatican. Um, some, some people even say it's liberal. Uh, how, what would you comment mm. on that? Well, I don't think our faculty changed. Uh, Leuven has been a proponent of the historical critical method already long before the Second Vatican Council. So in that regard, well, we, we should not forget that well, whether we like it or not, but Jansenius, uh, the one known from the Jansenist controversy, was a professor here in Leuven. So Leuven always has had its uh, independent voice in that regard. Of course, it is part of the Roman Catholic Church. And in as much there are, that there are many voices within uh, the Roman Catholic Church, 
church, this university has had, and especially the Faculty of Theology, has had its own voice in that. And this remains true up until this day. Uh, I think this university has been able to do great services to the Roman Catholic Church precisely because it has developed its own profile. And this is still the case today. I think there are a lot of bishops, for instance, who deliberately send some of their priests and lay people uh, for further formation to Leuven, and some others they send to other international centers, uh, Paris uh, or, or, or Rome for that matter. So you see, um, we are part, you could say, of that variety of theological styles which uh, in one way or another make Roman Catholic theology what it is. And I think we have to play that role. That is our, our duty to play that role. Uh, we are the place closest to Rome where you can study theology in English, uh, apart from Rome. Well, if we only would do what theological institutes in Rome do, why would we be there? Okay. No, we are here because we are part of Western Europe, challenged by secularization, by pluralization of religion, challenged by the, yeah, the global dimension of the European Union. We have to do theology in this setting, yeah, inviting others from all over the world to, yeah, to take part in our theological project of seeing how the Christian faith today could uh, be both plausible and relevant for people of today, both here in Belgium, in Europe, and in the rest of the world. So in that regard, I don't think um, it would be fair to say that we have changed. What definitely has changed is the context in which theology is done. And you could say that in as much as our faculty during all historical contexts it has lived, has tried to come up with, yeah, you could say, a theological project which was fit to that time and context. Our faculty does the same in our uh, yeah, uh, current Western European context. Do you think that uh, the official officials in the Catholic uh, Church do listen to the voice of the professors and the vision of Kai Leuven, yep. and if they do, in what sense? Yep. Well, as a matter of fact, I really think they do. Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, as I told you, uh, it are bishops sending their priest candidates here to study. So they are officials in the church, isn't it? Uh, if I look at our alumni, alumni uh, you see that a lot of our alumni are very prominently visible in the local churches, for instance, as presidents of seminaries, uh, uh, holding chairs for Christian studies in, in local universities, uh, forming part of uh, the curia of, of bishops and so on. So I really do think that our uh, alumni are valued for what they have learned here in Leuven. Another thing, and of course I find that, uh, you could say, a, a big compliment every time I hear that, when I speak to people abroad, Often people say, well, you can see, you can notice when people have been trained in Leuven. And I must say that I find that even if it is sometimes maybe not meant as a compliment, I still consider it a compliment. Indeed, we train people to be critical. That's definitely true. We train people to go in, in a critical, constructive way to deal with the Roman Catholic tradition within the context of today. Indeed, that's what we do. That's what, why we are here for. Uh, that's why uh, bishops uh, send uh, students to us. That's why uh, American young students decide to cross the Atlantic to study here. That's why people from Eastern Europe come and study here. That's why also non-Catholics, uh, because it's not only Roman Catholic studying here, also non-Catholics, uh, Orthodox, um, Protestant students and so on, decide to come to Leuven and to study here. Um, Leuven has a very strong academic credentials mm -hmm. uh, in theology. What do you think uh, Leuven has to offer to the Eastern countries, perhaps Orthodox countries, such as Russia in the first yeah. place, uh, in its academic theology? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think what we have on offer is that theology, apart from, you could say, being constitutive for the churches, for the church, the Orthodox Church, the Roman Catholic Church, at the university also has an academic duty. Uh, theology is at the crossroads, you could say, of the academy and the church, and I would add also of society, but I will come to that in a minute. 
First, at the crossroads of uh, the academy and the church. I think the best service theology can do to the church is to prove itself also on the academic forum as a good discipline, as a good scientific discipline, living up to, you could say, the exigences of what a uh, uh, yeah, theology as an academic discipline is. A doctorate in theology should not be of less academic value than a doctorate in philosophy or or sociology or the natural sciences. Doctorates are doctorates. I think that's already very valuable. And in yeah, showing also to yeah to yeah, theological institutions uh, belonging to other um, other confessions, other churches, but also other other parts of the world that this is uh, is not only possible but is something we should strive at. I think is a first a first uh, asset we can offer. To, uh, well, for instance, to the, uh, to the, uh, the theology and theological institutes in, uh, in Russia. The second thing, of course, is showing that being academic does not prevent you from rendering services to the church. It's not either or, it's both and. Eh? So when I say uh, theology is at the crossroads of the academy and the church, eh? then I really mean it. It's because it's academic that it can uh, render service to the church. As you said, there are many means to do so. Well, having little video films are, uh, are, are one means to do so, but uh, writing in papers, uh, uh, having an impact on, on discussions between church and society, for instance, um, rendering services and ethical commissions, uh, uh, helping to, to, you could say, write the, the more systematic theological background of pastoral planning and so on, are yeah, services you can offer as theology to the church precisely because you do your theological work seriously. The third uh, partner in here, uh, apart from uh, academy, the church, is and of course society. Eh? We all do know that um, the relationship between, you could sort of say, the more traditional religions, churches and society have changed and are changing much more than, than they used to especially in Western Europe, but I think a lot of these features are not absent from uh, more uh, Eastern European uh, and, and North, North Eastern European countries. Uh, we're talking then about secularization. We're also talking about, you could say, the, the encounter with religious difference, eh? the encounter with religious plurality and the way that questions, you could say, truth claims made in, in individual religions. Also there, I think, uh, yeah, we have something on offer here. Eh? because secularization indeed has uh, been dealt with in a very serious manner here in this faculty and also the question of religious diversity, not only interconfessional diversity within, you could say, the Christian horizon, but also interreligious diversity has, especially with the, uh, the coming of, uh, of Islam in Europe, but not only due to that, uh, yeah, has, brought, has, has impacted the way in which we, we deal with religion and society and the way in which we reflect about it.